Hi, everyone. Welcome to a very special edition of Retire with Style, Financial Professionals Edition. We haven't had one of these episodes in quite a while, but we have the opportunity to bring a very special guest onto the show from Creative One, Dennis Matchern. And we're really looking forward to having a conversation for financial professionals to make sure everyone understands what an IMO is and what they can do, because that's certainly for Alex and I, a term that we were not familiar with in our past <laughs> life before getting more integrated into the full financial services world and not being just on the investment side. Dennis, welcome to the show. Uh, it is, gentlemen, it is fantastic to be here. Uh, it is always a pleasure to hang out with the two of you cats. Uh, and it, it, it is always fun. You know, since I knew uh, I was going to be here um, with you guys, uh, I have my thesaurus right over here because I, <laughs> I am definitely the bring, bringing down of the uh, uh, of the IQ in this conversation uh, with my lowly political science degree. Uh, nah, but I, you don't know, don't worry, Dennis. Once I get once I get talking, people will realize that you actually <laughs> <laughs> are, are a good balance and. You bring me up, so don't you worry know, about that. Film study wait, 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 wait. I bring you up. That was that was a great left-handed compliment there. Yes, I yes. like that. I like you're that. The, you're the wind beneath my wings. I, I will take <laughs> it. Anywhere that I'm on the page, I'm going to take it with you guys. Uh, no, I want to thank you guys. I'd like to thank you for having me on. Um, you know, we've, we've done some work with you guys before. And um, one of the things that happens uh, in the industry is a lot of folks don't know what an IMO is. And then a lot of folks don't even, um, they don't recognize what we are. They don't know what, what we bring to the table. They don't know how that they have the opportunity to interact with us. Um, and so that, and thank you for having me on and talking about this. Like, and what I wanted to talk about was like maximizing the IMO relationship. So uh, where do we start? Uh, well, yeah, let's make sure we get a little bit of your background too. But also I want to ask Alex here, does he know what IMO stands for? Here's the test. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, I don't know if you picked up on this. I don't need Wade speaking for me. Did you see at the beginning how he said both Alex and I did not know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Why does yep. he need? Why does he feel this need? Well, if to bring I don't know, down like with him, he can't just like man up and say yes. I don't know. Maybe Alex knows. Who knows? Right? Did you, did you catch it. that? I love it. I saw it. Pop culture. You know, well, when you're when you're I, I when you're the guest, when you're the guest, you can't point these things out. You know, you gotta... in my on it. In my opinion, <laughs> IMO stands for no. I, I think it's Internet. No, Insurance Marketing Organization. Right? It is. Yep. Spot on. So we. Uh, so wait, we wait, saw... wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so there, Wade. There you go. <laughs> you got it. I, I now the, now while you continue that, Dennis. And I think it's important because I, I, Wade's right. I didn't know what, what these were, what the acronyms mm -hmm. were for this, because I came from an RIA, a registered investment advisory world. Yep. And, you know, when Wade and I started with the RISA, we realized, wow, there's, there's actually, sure, we can write about annuities and contractual income, but we didn't really know the nuts and bolts of the business in and mm -hmm. of itself. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's where terms like IMOs and FMOs and whatever started coming out of the woodwork for us. And I, I think most, I, I think it's fair to say a lot of our reader listeners are advisors in the mm -hmm. RIA vein as well as everyone. And maybe for them, if if they're in the same boat as us, maybe a quick level setting on vocab. I love, I love it. That is that is one of the things that to me is crazy about our industry is the use of acronyms, and then we use like the same letters. So, like for example, you can be the you can be an IAR of an RIA, and you can sell IRAs. Like, could we not use some more of the alphabet? Um, we so for the IMO, and you mentioned FMO and and these different classifications. So, in a nutshell, if you go back about forty odd years, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna this is the this is the historical lore according to me. So I'm anyone can fact check me, and I'm probably gonna get one or two. Ken Burns, things. ladies and gentlemen, Things are wrong, right? Um, the, you know, yeah, the monitor behind me will change to to mo to make the you know Ken Burnsian type moves here. Uh, I feel Civil War pictures coming on. You know, speaking of Ken Burns as a, as a rabbit oh, hole, since we're rabbit holing, we I like zombie movies, and there was a book called World War Z written by Max Brooks, who actually works uh, with West Point, Crazy Steel. Uh, okay. But they made it into a movie with Brad Pitt. The book yeah, yeah. is not the the book and the movie two different deals. If Ken Burns is listening to this podcast, Ken Burns, please make World War Z, follow the novel, 
and it would look like Civil War. It would look like baseball. It'd be the most incredible zombie movie. I, I think that movie had troubles. Like they had to recut the ending, this mm-hmm. and that. So I, I, mm-hmm. I think it was almost dead on arrival. No you know what, ended. You know what it had in common with the book? The title. That was, uh, <laughs> that's where it ended. Um, okay. Okay. So I digress. So if we go back, if we go back like 40-ish years, uh, a lot of insurance companies on the independent side. So as everyone knows, you can either be captive in this world. If you're working with financial products, you're Wells Fargo, you're Allstate, and you typically have to look at the home, the home brand first, um, if you're Allstate, for example. Uh, or you could be captive. And there's there's trade-offs. A, a person would have to make a decision there. So if you're going with the captive style, you're getting that national advertising, you're getting this infrastructure uh, and support, but you're also, you tend to, um, you tend to have more uh, structure, more, there's more rigid, a more rigid nature in there. Um, and you don't Dennis, have, you have sorry, flexibility. Just because there are some consumers and captive is kind of a weird word outside yeah, yeah. of this realm here. You may want to, just discuss what what does that mean captive i think the i think the easiest is that a way euphemism? To... what's the opposite <laughs> of a euphemism that's like a <laughs> where's my thesaurus where's the... uh so no i mean i mean if you think about it if you went to the nike store yeah they're sell, they're selling nikes and every you know if you go in there and it's like hey i'd like to run what do you recommend well we have a great nike over here so if you go into allstate and i don't mean to pick on allstate i just no, I, I get it yeah the guys are the guys in the office are watching the ncaa tournament over there um, and so I see a TV that's on, I saw an Allstate commercial, pizza, there's a Pizza Hut commercial. If you go to Pizza Hut, day, it's Pizza Hut. day to day? Now everyone's, everyone's working, <laughs> only I'm watching there. Um, but it's good to be the king. It, <laughs> long live the king. Uh, but no, so when I say captive, it means that they have a store brand and they, they're typically required or it heavily influenced to, um, to go with the store brand. Or you could be a broker or independent where you couldn't sell whatever fits, whatever you want. The challenge though, as a as an advisor, if you go that route or an independent producer, if you go that route, then you don't, the marketing is up to you. Uh, you don't have the infrastructure. You have to build all these things. When it comes to advertising, it's all on you. Uh, and so a lot, of in, a lot of carriers, insurance carriers made the decision, like we will outsource the support that, it, that insurance agents, financial professionals need uh, to those that specialize in that. That happened about like 40-ish odd years ago. And that starts what now is, what will be referred to as the IMO. You mentioned a second ago, you mentioned FMO. Uh, there's a lot of different terms through the years that different places have used to describe us and our place in the world. And what's funny is to me, having been in the industry now, getting up there in years, it's a little bit depending upon how you would the term you would use for us. If you said uh, FMO, I would know that's a term that Allianz referred to us as uh, to us as field marketing organizations. If you said BGA, I would know broker general agent. That's a life insurance term. You've got a life insurance background. So the way that those you, those words get used they, nowadays, they tend to get used interchangeably. But uh, just like you can look at the you know you can break down a word and see where it came from or someone's accent. Yeah. To me, it's kind of like that. So if you called us an FMO, I would understand a little bit of your background. But the common the common term for us now is independent marketing organization. And so ours, for example, and what I wanted to talk to, to the audience about was like maximizing that relationship. Um, my organization that I'm with, Creative One, we've been in business for 40 years. Uh, so we've been around the block a few times. Uh, but there are a lot of them. So an IMO at its basic core is should be should be a, a partner with you on your non-registered asterisks on that because we also work with Ryla products, uh, registered index linked annuities. Uh, but they they should be your resource for your marketing, advertising. They should be your resource for uh, product selection, product um, product and case design, talking through these different things and all levels of support. But I can tell you in just a second. Um, the things that you should be getting at a minimum and then the things that you should also be expecting. But you guys have any questions? I kind of rattled yeah. on there for a hot sec. No, I, I do. And this is more from, from the client, from a consumer point of view, this is, this is this, obviously this episode is geared for advisors. So yeah. if you're listening, uh, what, what I would try to take away from this is when you're, when you're looking at advisors for who you're going to use and the like, 
you want to make mm -hmm. sure that they're set up with the proper infrastructure. Because even though Absolutely. you may be in a discovery meeting and you're telling yourself, man, this person gets me. He understands me. That's very important. That's mm -hmm. most of the game right there. But if this person is not set up from an infrastructure standpoint to provide the services you need, that's going to be a very short relationship, if you will, because frustrations will mount. I, I, I think that's very yeah. important for a consumer. And so this is good to kind of get the, the lay of the land because we get a lot of questions from consumers and they're highly skeptical of advisor relationships. It's, it's almost like they're an advisor has to rally from the get-go to prove how they're not like, you know, out to mess somebody over. And, you know, I, I think that's from a, out there, right? I, I don't yeah. think that's rally, but it's just this. So there's that piece. The other piece is advisors where I made the connection and maybe you can disabuse me of this or say, yeah, that's, that rhymes with what we're doing. I come from the RIA world where there's a lot of, you know, the, the, the model is largely an assets under management kind of fee. And mm -hmm. so a similar service that advisors have, because many times advisors, they just focus on the relationship and some of them outsource everything to mm -hmm. a third party mm -hmm. that the client would never see. And I, I see that, I see an IMO doing similar things, but more than what a TAMP would do. A TAMP stands for turnkey asset management provider. And that's where an advisor offloads the management of portfolios to a third party, right? But mm -hmm. I think you guys do a similar thing as it as it relates to contractual income, you know, to, through annuities and the like. Plus, there's this sales enablement that you have that I don't I don't really see in a, with a lot of other temps, other than maybe branding collateral and stuff like that. Yeah, it gets you know it gets to be a lot more than that. And I think from the I think from the general consumer standpoint, this will be um, you know this is definitely a behind the you know, in the weeds kind of thing that, you know, I, they need to, as a consumer, you definitely need to do, uh, you need to do your homework. You need to ask the good questions. And there's some great resources out there. Uh, if a, if a cons member, a member of the general public is looking for information, there's, uh, the, um, association for retirement income, there's NAFA, there's all these trade organizations that have put together, uh, questions and things that uh, a, a member of the general public should use to ask their advisor. Um, I think one of the biggest things when it comes to, if you're a member of the general public is just remember maybe one of the basic rule of, rules of thumbs is that there is no one solution that is perfect. Like everything, that's one thing I, from my securities background is, you know, everything, every decision we make in life, risk versus reward. I've got a Diet Pepsi over here. I made a, I made a choice. That was a promotional consideration paid to Diet <laughs> Pepsi because I bought this pop. I, I bought this soda. But, you know, I made a, I made a decision. Do I want the uh, uh, whatever the artificial sweetener is here that could eventually cause me trouble? We all make these decisions. And, and from, the, from the consumer standpoint, that's something that you need to look at is, you know, looking at what somebody brings to the table, making sure they have the credentials, uh, understanding their philosophy um, and making sure it drives with you. And also if it's a good, re it, it does have to be a good relationship because uh, in the advisory world, it is all about relationships and they should be long-term relationships, uh, not some kind of transactional thing because you are going to get old. You're going to retire with this person, if you will. And that's important. Absolutely. And so, yeah, getting into this issue now of, a TAMP in the RA world, you outsource that investment management. But if you're just thinking an IMO is a way to outsource the insurance management, there's really mm -hmm. a lot more available. And can you just talk a little bit about what all IMOs are able to provide to it? Yeah, that, that's a services? that's a great point because for the um, so putting you know talking back to the to the um, uh, going back to the advisor side of this uh, of the world. Um, because that's where we interact is with with advisors uh, and registered reps and insurance agents. Uh, although predominantly, uh, you know, over the last, golly, uh, I guess probably now thirty something years that I've been in the industry, the percentage of people that we've worked with in our industry has gone from a small segment that was registered in some form or fashion to now uh, the vast majority of producers that we work with are registered. Uh, they're either an IAR or they are a registered rep uh, with a broker dealer, but uh, 
when they're looking, when they, when we're working with them uh, as an advisor, the things that you need to have from an IMO at the base, this is like block and tackle. If you don't have this, you need to be looking for a different, you need to be looking for a different spot. Um, contract and licensing, that sounds boring, but making sure your appointments are correct uh, with the carriers and making sure that that sets up everything because we do work in a contract law world over here. Um, new business, these are, these are things that uh, departments that Right now, there's so much money going behind from one company to the other. Uh, it's not like a, it's not the world where somebody comes into the office and writes a check and says, go ahead and invest this. This is money coming from one institution going to the other. And in the non-registered world, uh, there's a lot of money in motion. And to make sure that it gets moved in a timely manner uh, is a little different than the securities world. So having a having a dedicated group of people that are following up on that business for you, um, product support, making sure that you have the latest and greatest and you're up to date on everything that's going on because the world is, as we know, always coming out with new products, new designs, new solutions, but then case design. So that right there, that right there is table stakes though. There are some places, every place can do that. Every place should be able to do that. If they can't hit those four things, then that is a problem. Well, um, Dennis, uh, yeah. just to, so in products, how does... Uh -huh. How does, and you can talk about Creative One since, you know, that's obviously who you know. And this is of interest to me, actually. How does Creative One stay in front of products that are available and products being like insurance products? And the use case that I'm proposing is an advisor does a financial plan for somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. the RISA indicates that contractual income is a great solution. The financial plan confirms it. What does the advisor do? Because I think consumers and maybe other advisors are, are under the impression that, you know, they, they constantly can filter out products. I, I think the IMOs are the ones that really, once you tell, once an advisor tells the IMO, this is generally what we're looking at with these levers. I think that's mm -hmm. when the IMO shines by having this roller decks of products that they're constantly filtering. Can you talk about that a little bit? Oh, absolutely. You know, that is, that is true. There are, there are hundreds of products that are available and the kicker is the kicker is is getting into the weeds with the advisor. That's we have a sales team. I'm a, I'm a pointer and I'm a geographical guy, so uh, we have sales teams over on the other side of that wall uh, okay. in our other office. But their job is to have those conversations with an advisor after the advisor has, of course, met with their with their client to discuss. You know, the the advisor and the client they're having these conversations of and mapping out the future, mapping out the plan, the retirement, we're gonna to look to do this at this age and look to do this at this age. And of course, just like the US Constitution, it's a living document, right? So it's always, you know, things are always changing, retiring early, later, whatnot. But when they have that conversation with the client and they've, they're laying these plans out, then it's time to implement, like, so how are we going to do this? How are we going to deliver on this? And that's where then having the conversation with our with with our teams, uh, having that conversation of this is what we're looking to do. Uh, and a lot of, you know, a lot of times it comes down a lot of times you can look and like, OK, the the highest blank is this. That's the one we should use. But that that's actually where things get a little crazy, because sometimes um, whatever produces maybe the highest number is not the best solution. And what I mean by that is. Um, you know, you could have last night my favorite basketball team played, and we've got a guy that's amazing at um, at scoring, can't play defense worth anything. And so it's one thing like, hey, we need a great scorer. Great. Well, we also need somebody, but, but we give up so much if we do that. And so that's where our sales teams come into play as far as evaluating and looking at what is the actual best solution, having that conversation with the advisor, with the financial professional, and laying out like, this is what you should present. Here's an alternative, but these are the reasons why we came to this conclusion. So that, you know, just like Wade is a one man think tank, I've heard him described that way. Uh, just like that, we can provide, we can be that back office, that that design specialist for the producer. Because, you know, one thing, one thing a lot of people don't realize is that there's, in the world of advisors, there are those that are maybe with a big wirehouse where they're in a branch office with 15 or 20 other advisors, uh, you know, in, in the in the blank blank office, you know. But there are so many more advisors, and especially in the RIA world, uh, that are out there that are offices of one or two, or they're, they're smaller offices. 
um, I wouldn't say they're men and women on an island, but they're not in a big office where they, they have 10, 15 people. So they need someone to provide and, and work in that function to provide them unbiased advice mm -hmm. to help them work their way through. And that is where we provide that function. I will, I will throw McLean in, in the mix here. Wade and I are principles of McLean and we use Creative One. And we're a sizable firm, but the reality is, and we have we have a st an internal staff member whose full-time job is to help process the applications for mm -hmm. insurance and, and nothing else. And even then, there's not enough manpower to really to do the due diligence that you do behind the solutions that work well. I mean, it's a great way to just leverage what you're doing, you know, from one to many for us. And so I, I, I totally see what you're saying. And it doesn't even have to be a one or two person shop. I mean, McLean, yeah. we have a staff of about 30. And it makes total sense for us to really, when it gets down to get to that last mile on what that specific solution is, it makes perfect sense for us to pick up the phone and say, hey, Dennis, what gives? Yeah. Yeah, you know, the the other thing there, too, that I always think, and this is going to date me, but I also I also don't watch golf. So in all fairness, I've, I've given me some slack. Sure. Um, I always use this analogy when I'm talking to advisors, and I always say that Tiger Woods does not carry his own clubs. Uh, and the reason I say that is as an advisor, you have so many things that you need to when you're working with clients. When you're working with your clients, you need there's so many things that you have to take into account. Tiger Woods does not need to carry his own clubs. Tiger Woods does not need to know um, what is the what is the the uh, metallurgic makeup of the the shaft of his driver. That's my job. That's our job uh, to be able to make sure that he has the best and be able to explain it if he wants to know. Uh, but to be able to provide that support so that as an advisor you can focus on the things you need to focus on and not not be spending hours looking up. Uh, you know, what's the highest immediate annuity rate in uh, oh, Vermont, you. you know, that's, that's for so, us to do. So is it fair to say then when it comes to identifying the product solutions, once the advisor has determined that it is a good fit and there's an economical, there's an economic reason for this, you folks function as both a consultative mm -hmm. back and forth to really begin to drill down, but then the administrative fulfillment part of it. Because the reality is, is that that's another huge issue that you have. And part of it is because unlike an advisor like ourselves, you guys are dealing directly with carriers. That's correct. And so having that back and forth just provides an immeasurable amount of context and influence, for lack of a better word, in terms of what can be available and what may not be. Is that an accurate description? Yeah, that, that is absolutely an accurate description. But, you know, we're... For a member of the general public, or like when I'm at a party and someone asks what our company does, because we're very niche, uh, I always say that you know we're, we're we're basically financial wholesalers, like so we provide that wholesale function. Um, but being able to navigate that is why that is a big reason why we exist is the is the ability to navigate the Byzantine world. Uh, I threw that word in for you, Alex, but the Byzantine world uh, <laughs> of insurance carriers and the movement, you know, to, to assist in the movement of money, um, to make sure that for clients that their money gets put to work ASAP and it's not just it's not just loafing around. But what we've talked about up to this point, though, for an advisor working with an IMO, yeah. that's table stakes. If they can't do every every one of my competitors has to be able to do that. Our peers has to be able to do that or that you should move your business. Yeah. So the fundamentally an IMO is providing greater efficiency for advisors to mm -hmm. be able to provide the best insurance options out there. But indeed, there's so much more creative one can do or if looking at different IMO options yeah. that not just outsourcing the uh, complexities of the insurance management, but other tasks where there can be efficiencies by having a team to help yeah. you along the way. Could you talk about some of those other? Yeah. So I, I, I think the, uh, so that what I was talking about is table stakes, because there are, there are for creative, for creative, we have, you know, there are, there are hundreds of versions across the nation of, IMOs, we figure that we have maybe we're a top 10 for, uh, firm in the industry. And maybe we have what I would like to think, or maybe two other peers. Uh, and I say that because there's been some changes and I'll talk about that in a second, as far as things to watch out for. But... Okay. But you have to throw in the word labyrinth or Baroque. 
Labyrinth, or I can I, I can use labyrinth. Or Baroque. labyrinthian, or baroque. When you get baroque, into go on. You, you put you put Carry baroque on. out there, and I, I'm just I start thinking painting old world paintings, and then I get lost because I, I don't know. But okay, so what what takes what you should also have at an IMO next level? Um, your IMO should be a business partner, and what I mean by that is they should be bringing you uh, new ideas. They should be bringing you new concepts. They should be talking to you about something like Risa. Uh, and how you apply that to your firm. They should be talking to you uh, about additional product lines. So, for example, uh, they should be they should also be able to have a conversation with you about life insurance, about uh, DI, about these different things, uh, because you or your clients are going to ask you these questions, and you, for an efficiency standpoint, um, you want to be able to get those get that answered as quickly and, as possible. And so DI, you mean this is for <laughs> consumers, disability. Yep, disability. So disability. think about it. An IMO is involved in the entirety of the insurance spectrum. Mm -hmm. I have to tell you, I feel a little bad because um, because of where we fit in the world. Uh, we don't run into cons we don't run into the end consumer. So when I when I think client, I think yeah, I, advisors, I you know what I mean? Um, so I hate to, I, we're going to have to tell some jokes or something because I feel bad for the members of the general public that might be listening. To well, the, the the people that listen to us are not the the average bear, if you will. They're Wade writes in a very technical nature because that's just how he is and that's how we are. And yeah. so we kind of pull for folks that are actually highly analytical as consumers. So it's fine. It, okay. it, I, I think it's a weird way they get a kick out of this. Okay. Yeah. Well, so then here's a here's a real back of the uh, back of the locker room, you know, behind in the locker room kind of thing. I love uh, I love the TV show Shark Tank for a couple of reasons. And one, and this is why I love our business. Um, when I watch Shark Tank, I'm always I, I get such a kick out of how creative people are, and then also that they have the intestinal fortitude. Those people that go on Shark Tank, they take all their funds, they take their retirement income, they talk their wife or their husband into it, and they invest everything into themselves like they're putting all their chips on them and those are the that is exactly the kind of person that we work with like if that's a financial advisor that an advisor a financial professional they don't have the benefit of a paycheck you know they don't have a steady paycheck they are they are, are small business owners is what they are and they put um they bet on themselves. And I find that so cool. And so that's one of the things that I love about our business and our industry is helping them succeed. And one of the ways we do that, if you watch Shark Tank, one of the things that as a business owner, they're always wondering about is, you know, where's that next client coming from? And one of the things that we do, and we do it very well here. And if you are, if you're working with an IMO, they better be doing this for you, but they need to be, they need to be helping you meet your next client. Because your existing clients need you to have a thriving practice because they need you to be in business next year and 10 years from now and 15 years from now. And that's an area that that is an area that my company over that way, I pointed that way for our sales team yeah. over that way. We have an in-house, we have a complete in-house advertising agency. Well, this is what took me away, a, a, a blew me away because I, I didn't realize the, the level of what this means. Like IMO really is not just in the acronym. It really means marketing organization. And so we've talked about like identifying, you know, the advisor at a certain point raises his hands and says, I have someone that wants and needs an annuity. And then mm -hmm. you help them go through the process, the, the actual process. Now we're switching the conversation towards how you help them engage in new prospects. Or even let's say there's a client that they did something four or five years ago. There may be the ability to improve something, but I'm interested yeah. in the, the, the marketing piece of it, because, you know, we're fascinated by it. And frankly, ever since Wade and I started this podcast, we kind of are like, oh, are we marketers? Because we have a podcast now and we're getting folks. So, I, I, yeah, I'm curious, what are the ways in which you really help advisors get, you know, potentially get new business through new relationships? That is, you know, a great question. And it is that's one thing that has definitely gotten more nuanced over the years. Um, and we really if you were to walk over there, um, we have a labyrinth of products and opportunities there i got it in there um i'm still trying to remember what baroque means i, I can't define it in my head but no so we can do our advertising Detailed, department. We'll go okay on, I'll, I'll, i'm gonna work i think on, you know work. i think you know <laughs> um, but so you know we can do we can we can do anything from something as pedestrian as a paper business card like we can do that 
all the way to the other end of the spectrum, uh, we can do geofencing. So if we want to pick up IP addresses at a factory, uh, and then and what what ends up happening? So folks, if you're ever if you've ever been somewhere, opened up your phone, and then later on you you know you pop open and you're looking at CNN and you start seeing some advertisements for like why am I getting an advertisement for uh, you know the so and so casino or something? That's how like and and uh, we don't do that one as much. It just sounds that that one's always fun to talk about. Um, maybe a, uh, uh, but from there we can do we do a lot of advertising in social media. Um, I do always like telling this uh, this one when I mentioned that we're uh, we advertise a lot on Facebook. And uh, if it's somebody younger, they'll I can actually see them roll their eyes because they're like Facebook, like who's on Facebook? And it's like no, people who are interested in financial um, uh, financial decisions, retirement decisions, and once you start getting serious, you don't really start getting serious about this. Most people you don't start getting serious about this until you get a little older. And you have a, you actually have some assets to, to worry about. Um, the other thing I think about too is I am going to put this on the air. I am fifty one, going on fifty two. I'm fifty one. Yeah. All right. Okay. Look at us. When's uh, your birthday? When's your birthday? End of May. End of May. Uh, so I'm coming up. May twenty six. End of uh, May. Hey, May twenty six, and I'm a large. Just you know, yeah. whatever <laughs> you want to do there with that. that I'm a medium. Medium. I like. It. <laughs> Um, but you know what? Actually, think about yourself, Alex. Like if I was trying to, you know, most a lot of people don't think about their finances until they get really close. Yeah, to retirement. you're right. So how would somebody like right now, if you think about it, how would I how would somebody how would an advisor get your attention? Now, it's different because you're in the industry. But how? Like, I, yeah, like you're for right. Me, uh, it, it, yeah, I don't you know what? I don't I even don't, I, I don't do Instagram. I don't do I, I follow, I, I do Twitter, I, you know, X, whatever you call it, but I use it as a news feed. I kind of do don't too. like, it's just a news feed. You know, there are certain yeah. things and you go from there. Uh, I do LinkedIn. Actually, LinkedIn, I do probably yeah. the most. And, but I don't know if that's because we're, we're hustling on it or yeah. because yeah. I'm on it, right? Facebook, yeah. I don't do, but there's a login issue. But if I did one, I can see myself do it because the reality is Generation X. It's almost like, yeah. you know, you, you, you were at an age where, you don't want to be the oldest guy at the dance, you know, mm -hmm. which is like the hip club. You never yep. want to be the oldest guy there, right? So where you know you got to recognize where you are in life. We're in that kind of the 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 second tertiary one, and that's Instagram slash Facebook, not TikTok. Yeah, we you know I, I think about this I think about this conundrum all the time because I will and if anybody that knows me is is checking this out, um, I'll hop on every now and then and I'll make sure I catch up on saying happy birthday. And then for the most part, I don't want to see your vacation that or you know, I no offense to anybody, but, uh, you know, your brand new car is great, but like, you know, maybe I want to see my uncle's kids that I want to see, but otherwise, you know, I'm in and out. So I think about that because like you, like you, I get on, um, on Twitter and I'll end up running down some silly rabbit hole. Uh, but I don't get on, I don't get on Instagram. And to me, LinkedIn is a, is, you know, a business function. Oh, it's kind of interesting. I've noticed more and more people are sharing Facebooky type things on on uh, yeah, LinkedIn, yeah. which seems like a, it seems kind of weird to me. But um, but I so I digress though. But that's one of the biggest challenges out there for for people is how do you cut? How do as an advisor do you cut through the noise? How do you reach people who need to hear this message at a time when there's when more people have more access to more information and so much of it is is okay. misinformation, you know, so, like, how do you, how do you cut through and how do you get to them? And that's what we so, help advisors do. So take me through it. I'm an advisor. I've just started a relationship with creative one and we got the, the logistics of finding out about annuities and, you know, doing the, the basic stuff. Yep. But now you're, now you're like, okay, let's help you grow your business. Exactly. Boom. Take it away. What, what process do you folks have? What's within well, the purview of, of, of things you can do? So one Sorry. of the first, yeah, one of the first things that we would do with you is with an advisor, and you should be getting this where you're doing your business now, is uh, we would set up a strategy session because we need to understand who you are. This is really, it's really a lot like what you're doing with your clients, uh, with the general public. We sit down and we will have a conversation and we will figure out who you are, strengths, weaknesses, what you want to do, where you want to go, what you see yourself as a, uh, I was just in a meeting about an hour and a half ago. I, if I could show you this picture, I would, but 
uh, we'll go ahead and we'll do 30 day, 60 day, on Facebook. 90 day. <laughs> uh, but we'll go through, we'll do a, we'll do a, a 30, 60, 90 day, and then we'll look, we'll extend that out uh, and work our way through it. Now, one of the things when you're doing that with an advisor is you also have to be cognizant. I can tell you all the things you should do. Alex, you could tell me all the things that I should be doing if I want to have six pack abs. I also still have to right. work my job. I and I, I know, <laughs> but, but, you know, I, but that's the thing is like, it, it has to be. So when you're working with somebody, um, you have to set goals and you have to set like what can be done and what's realistic and work with somebody towards that and find out what they want. Because um, I could look, you could look at, you could look at my life, Wade, you could look at my life and you could be like, you need to do this, this, and this. Um, but I also have to make, I also want to have to have the same things. Um, I shouldn't eat as many sweet tarts, the little chickies that they make for Easter. I love those things though. Like I shouldn't have that much sugar, but I'm going, so marrying that all in and helping an advisor continue to build their business. That's what we do. Um, so when you ask what, 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 what kind of things do we do? Business cards. We have a podcast. We have a great podcast called complete advisor. I think you guys have been on there. Shameless plug. Um, we have a, we do television commercials for advisors. We go on location. We're doing a, we're actually filming a couple TV shows, um, pretty big budget one up in Ohio. Uh, but we have a studio here in house, um, that we when you do we, TV shows. What does that mean? I'm talking like a 30 minute TV show. Like an happening. infomercial. If I, well, yeah. The advisors on the local, just like with the radio shows, right? It's Yeah. Man, yeah. That's, that's my dream way to have like an infomercial. <laughs> <laughs> I, I swear I would love, I would absolutely love it, but that's my own yeah. thing. But go on. So they, yeah, they do uh, the one that we're doing right at the moment that I'm, that I'm thinking of. Cause this, then this one pops into my head. Cause we've done, we do smaller versions, yeah. but this is a, this is like a, a big, this is a big production. And uh, it's on a major network. It's on um, Saturday evening, like right before wow. the news. So they're spending some money on this thing, and but it's paying off big. But we're doing the scripting. We're working with, the, I mean, the the green screen technology, the virtual studio. I mean, uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, we do we we do the television. Uh, we do national. We've done national TV commercials. Um, We've done radio. Uh, radio is fun. We help a lot of people get on podcasts, but then we do a lot of the print. Another area that we work with folks is helping them with seminars, uh, getting in front of groups of people who are interested you know, can you, uh, in the topic. I did catch the, I was at the, con Wade and I were at the Creative One Conference, mm -hmm. and I found it similar how there's like a bridging or a transition from the old world to a new world. And what I mean by that is, you know, those dinners in which you mm -hmm. get a mailer, and mm -hmm. et cetera, to education courses that advisors do to provide value and then, you know, establish a relationship to even just straight up webinars where the invites are all done on Facebook and everything. Mm -hmm. How's that? Mm -hmm. From your observation, is there a way to discern who's doing it right, who's doing it wrong, or it doesn't matter? It, 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 there's many Man. ways to do it. Go with whatever there, works for you. There's a, there's a million ways. So I, you know, uh, one of the things on, you know, there's always been the debate of, of uh, dinner seminars and they had gotten a pretty hard rap because uh, just like in any, any industry, there's folks that do things the right way and there are folks that do things the wrong yeah. way. Uh, and the, the thing with dinner seminars is they are effective uh, from an advisor standpoint, from a financial professional standpoint. Um, they're expensive. I mean, you're taking somebody out to, to eat. I mean, shoot, you know, when you take your family out or you're, when you're when your when your brother's family's in town and you end up picking up the tab, you know they can get pricey. So if you Dude, imagine, I, I have three pool. kids. I went to Five Guys the other day. <laughs> no, I kid you not. It was four hamburgers, a small fry, and like three shakes, and it was like seventy bucks. It's crazy. I don't, I don't know. You know, I'm the youngest of five, and I don't know how in the heck. And it's all boys too, so I don't know. And they're all everyone's like my size. I'm like six four and yeah. two ten. So I don't know how uh, I don't know how my parents did that. We we had breakfast for dinner a lot, uh, a lot of pancakes back in the day. Huh, okay. um, but no, so that there is no that, that that is a very effective way though of if you get people that are interested in a topic and you get them together. I mean, the you know the efficiency is there. Um, some advisors like to do that. Um, some of them get some people don't because you do have a, a segment of the society that that gets that mail. Like if I get, I get those mailers cause now I'm in that, that demographic and I'll look and I'll be like, wow, 
uh, Ruth Chris, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> but but I wouldn't do it. I you know my personal code put into me by my parents was you know um, there's no such thing as a free lunch and there's an expectation and that's what I believe. Like if if you invited me out to lunch, I'm I feel morally obligated to listen to whatever it is that you have to say. Um, in a business standpoint, like I'm open to that. Um, but even so if Salt Bay is cooking, even if that guy Salt Bay is cooking, that's that fancy um, guy that does the, the thing with the salt over his shoulders. I, I would try it. You know, I'd be up for it, you know. Um, no, but I, but I get what you're saying. I mean, I, I wouldn't either. Yeah. I, I, you know, as much as advisor or advisors that do it the wrong way. Could you imagine a prospect that goes to it just to get a free dinner and and, and then tries to be a rabble rouser at that thing? What's the yeah. point? That's yeah, there's ridiculous. there's a there's a term and you just said it way, but I don't I that's I, I don't like that <laughs> term. It's just it's just not I don't know. I just I've never been fond of it because it just sounds so negative. But it's true. But it's like you do have people that come in and look at that Ruth Chris thing and like, oh, this is great. I can go eat here, 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 and here. <laughs> and then you know, down in um like you think down in um in Florida, there's that that ginormous retirement community called yeah, the, the villages. villages. And I I'm sure that they can get, you know all their meals taken care of during the week. But, um, and the advisors, you know, they work on making sure that they're not inviting the same people or, you know, it's like, Hey, you know, Alex, you've been to this like six times. So, you know, no steak for you. <laughs> I'm uh, almost there. I'm almost yeah. there though. <laughs> yeah. But so there's like a whole, you know, there's a whole science behind looking at, um, you know, what does the mailer look like? You know, the different options you're offering. Why are you selecting that restaurant? Um, even down to like, you know, when you think about location, if you ever think about this in my neighborhood, there's a, there's a building, this business, and it has got the best street visibility, like bar none, like from a major inner like major yeah. street. The problem is you cannot get into that doggone parking lot, like to save your life. So I've never actually been in there. And there's been about four businesses, restaurants that have come and gone in this place. Cause it's like, yeah, I, you've got great visibility, but you can't, you can't get in there. So, you know, we, you, you work with people on those kind of things, but then there's the other, there's the other side of the coin where folks will do advisors, financial professionals. And you probably are hearing me go back and forth. Uh, when I say finance, when I say advisor, then I'll switch over to financial professional because folks, for those of you that are uh, members of the general public, there are different designations, different ways of referring to different types of producers. So financial professionals kind of catches everybody, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, but we do, we do, uh, we help folks do more classroom, uh, events, things that they can do at either libraries or, uh, um, community colleges where there, it is a classroom thing and there's no, there's no selling it's educating. Uh, we help advisors do though. Those, that's a different, a different animal. Yeah, what, what are the benefits of that? Cause I, it, this is something that retirement researcher Wade, our own personal backgrounds, you know, we're big into education. Yeah. And so, so the big. I've always yeah, the, liked that approach. I've never done it, but that's always something that, no, that's an interesting way to grow your business, leading yeah. with value like that. But can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, from an advisor standpoint, from a financial professional standpoint, it might be a little scary because one thing you're not doing is you're not, at the end of your presentation, you're not, you know, it's not a commercial for you. You're educating. Yeah, you're not pitching. And the, you know, the, the, the hope and the thing that hopefully you've built towards is that at the end of that educating, uh, when you when you provide somebody, these are the questions, these are the things you need to think about, that they look to you and say like, oh wait, is that something you do? Uh, but not like, you know, not, you know, if you go to a dinner seminar, you know that they're gonna be looking for your business. I mean, you would be naive uh, to think that you're getting, you know, a three course meal with uh, drinks and with wine and some coffee at the end and, and uh, you know, thanks for coming by. Uh, the expectation is there. There's that. There's that hope for business. Um, the community college or the library route, you're educating and you're putting yourself out there as a subject matter expert, with the hope that you've done a good enough job of establishing yourself as the as the person that they should consider if they need to call somebody. Uh, the beauty of it, the be you know, the, the one of the great pros is that um, you know, doing something at a library or a community college, if you can get on to community college. Uh, you're not paying, uh, you're not buying someone steaks. You know, you're, you know, maybe you're giving them a bottle of water. There's not that expectation. Yeah. Uh, there's a little more teaching. I mean, you are putting together content that, uh, good, solid content, that's educational content. Uh, so it's a little different way to go. And some folks, uh, some folks like that, some folks don't. And then the other, the last way uh, is the virtual, which has been a very interesting 
really kind of the last five years, um, a different venue for producers to uh, financial advisors, financial professionals to look at. And it has its pros and it has its cons. And one of the, one of the big one, to me, one of the big pros is that as an, as a financial professional, you have the ability to expand your footprint, if you will, <clears throat> excuse me, instead of Kansas city, you know, you can, you can put this content out uh, wherever you're, wherever you're licensed, of course, you know, make sure you're dotting all the I's crossing all the T's, but you have the ability to expand your footprint. If you're in a major city um, that has like legit traffic, um, you don't have to worry if you put on an educational event, you don't have to worry about somebody, you know, getting snarled up in traffic, uh, which is great. And then the consumer, the, the member of the general public has the ability to consume that information when they want to. So yeah, you can just picture somebody, I, I just have this vision in my head of somebody learning about uh, retirement income strategies while they're having a glass of red wine in their slippers standing around their, you know, their uh, kitchen island. Uh, such a wait, beautiful wait, do, little... Do you have a camera into Wade's living room? I get yeah, that's uh, what Wade had a meeting. Right? And that's, exactly, <laughs> that's exactly how he was set up. <laughs> Got those like fur lined slippers on and, you know, the, uh, the ass, like a little ascot in the... I think he the... saw like a Hugh Hefner documentary and he was I... all inspired... <laughs> little captain's hat. Yeah. You've got it. You know, you've got to be quite the guy to pull off a captain's hat. Uh, but no, but this is I, I find this fascinating in many ways. And I think there's some follow up things to, to do here. But what do you find? And, and well, and so from the job of creative one, an advisor comes up to you. You have a, a you can't boil the ocean. Right. And try to do That's everything. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you help guide somebody to identify which maybe marketing approach is the best based on their style or the clients that they're targeting, et cetera. And also with that, there's a whole pre and post event. Yes. Sequence that yes. has to be taken care of. Correct. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. And having, having the conversation and nailing down like somebody, you know, working into somebody's strengths and somebody's weaknesses. Um, you know, there are some people that want to do certain things and it's like, you know, that's not really you. Um, I, th there are folks that want to do, um, podcast. I don't want to sound mean. <laughs> yes. I, you know, so you run in, you do run into folks that want to do different types of, of, of things like that. And it's, it's just, you know, you're, if you're going to do it as a hobby, just don't put too much time into it. Cause there are some folks that aren't so red hot at it. Um, that maybe their strengths lie elsewhere. I sound like my mom, like their strengths lie elsewhere. <laughs> um, you know, there are, there are things that, uh, that we just all have our, we just all have our strengths and weaknesses and helping somebody, you know, lean into those in, instead of trying to overcome some something they're not good at, you know, lean into what you're good at. Um, and that's, you know, that's, that's part of the coaching. But also, you know, another thing too is uh, just with anything, making sure that people have correct expectations. Just, just, like, just like if you're a member of the general public and your advisor, the person you're working with for your finances, they should have, just like your doctor, they should have realistic conversations with you and not, you know, blowing, be blowing smoke. Um, and that is one of the things I actually have that on my list of things that, uh, you know, to watch for is that, you know, the flashy, we've, how many, how many times have you seen this where, like when you get to an intersection, you guys live in nicer neighborhoods than I do, but we have these every now and then. Where somebody has that sign and it says like lose thirty pounds in thirty days. They used to have those. You guys remember those? Maybe not. Yeah, um, I, I, I collect them. Yeah, nice, <laughs> nice. Or when you're, you know, when you're when you're flipping through some kind of social media and there's the guy that like has one percent body fat and it's like diet and exercise. Psh, you know, try yeah. my program and it's like you know nobody you know telling someone to eat broccoli and do sit ups is not very attractive, but that's the that's that's how it really works. And so with, uh, with marketing, but then also, you know, if you went to an advisor as a client and they were telling you these ridiculous numbers, that person should be out of business. Cause that's not, that's not realistic. Like that's not the way the world works. It is, it's hard work and it's consistency and things like that. Yeah. Um, so I mentioned that because, because I've seen, I've seen competitors, I've seen different things out there, put these unrealistic expectations and what they're looking for in our industry, there's they say there's clients uh, and customers, and a customer is that person that buys one time, and a client is somebody you work with for life. 
And there are people out there, there's probably financial professionals out there that are just looking for the customer, the one time, boom, 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 and you know, who's next yeah. uh, versus those people that are looking for clients. And that's where you've got to be the best friend and the business partner and have realistic conversations, just like your, just like your financial professional should be laying ex reasonable expectations because you can't have your portfolio expect to go to Hawaii every year, buy a new Tesla uh, on an annual basis. Maybe you can, God bless you, right? But you know, you've got to, you've got to have realistic expectations. And so we help set those too. Virtual was an area where I think that happened too, where people thought it was just going to be, you know, pennies from heaven and it's still work. It's still hard work. No, it's still hard work. I mean, look with us, with retirement researcher, not my claim, we, that's largely a, a, it's an RIA. It's, it's an asset less our RIA where a registered investment advisor, because we provide a lot of education and sometimes it can be considered advice. So we yeah. just register ourselves as advisors. But there we have clients from all over the country, and that's largely from webinars and things we do. So I, I, I totally see that uh, increasing more and more. But is it fair to say then, as, as we close this up, from an IMO, for the, for the uninitiated, if you will, they provide a tremendous level of advice from the consultative side in terms mm -hmm. of identifying and structuring a potential product solution, such as an annuity, that would fit for a certain client once all that's been determined by the advisor. And Absolutely. Then, so there's that one. Then they actually help you run, help the advisor run through the tape on the actual fulfillment side because deciding on that product is probably half of the battle. Now you have mm -hmm. to fill out the contracts, make sure that the carrier gets paperwork back on time, they accept the paperwork. Even though a client may not see this, this is the bane of many advisors' existence. And you effectively help facilitate that process in a, in a significant manner. That's the second peg. And then the, the, the third piece that I've heard is, okay, now we have that. Then you help them set up their flywheel for bringing in new clients and the like. And mm -hmm. with that, that's, that involves a consultative process because you're really playing into what the advisor does well. And so then how do we emphasize what they do well within XYZ type of approach versus the ABC type of approach? Is that, is that, does that encapsulate? I agree with all these things. Uh, yeah, no, it totally, it totally does. And, and, you know, for the, if you're a member of the general public, you shouldn't see us because everything went 100% smoothly uh, for the advisor. Yeah. Our job is to be in that back office and provide that additional support that they need so that everything goes lickety split. Um, I do have two other things though. I got to throw oh, yeah. out there. Fire away. So as you're, as you're, if you're a financial professional and you are evaluating where you're at, um, one thing I think that's important to look for is does that, does that IMO have a BD or, uh, and, or their own RIA. And the reason why I'm mentioning that is not, because I'm advocating you should move your BD or your RIA relationship because that is no small consideration. Um, but the beauty of having working with an IMO that has a broker dealer, their own broker dealer and, and or an RIA firm is that when it comes to the, the marketing, the advertising I was talking about, when you have a broker dealer, when you have an RIA like we do, you're bouncing, you're running these things through compliance. Now, for those of you that are registered, you know that that doesn't, you know, you still have to run it through your own compliance. But the fact that something's already gone through the wash once makes it a lot yeah. easier to be clean. You, you know what I mean? So um, that's a, to me, that is a, that is a big deal. Um, additional product lines, longevity of the firm. We've been around 40 years. One does not want to run with somebody that's uh, uh, just been, a, just brand spanking new fly by night. Um, Advocacy. We also add, you know, are they are they active advocating for the business itself, the industry itself? Uh, and then lastly, here's two things that I that I've been watching. I've been doing this now for I want to say thirty something years, which is weird because I don't feel like it's been that long. Um, but in our world, uh, there's been a lot of consolidation and creative. We are one of a handful of the still independents, and you know, with consolidation. There's a lot of venture capitalist money coming in, a lot of big money coming in buying. Um, just, to me, it, it just kind of grays out all the fun color that used to be here. Uh, the differentiation between firms, the different personalities, uh, getting to be a lot of maybe a little corporate -y. The other thing I see, too, is um, 
Well, as mentioned before, um, I see a fair bit of, uh, I've been seeing a little more of the, I call it kind of the hero model, um, where there's the, the flashy person that's like, you know, look what I can do and I can show you this. And, you know, they, they weren't an advisor. Um, and it's usually, it's usually something of, you know, probably not going to capture this right, but it's personality driven and I can't be anybody other than who I am. So if you can show me the X's and O's, I will succeed, but I cannot imitate you because after a while, you know, I, I just bleed through just who I am. Yeah. yeah. That's a weird one. But that one, I see that all the time where it's like, I want to be as cool as that guy. It's like, well, you know what? You're still yourself. Yeah. Well, it's part of the authenticity of marketing. Like you got, if you lose, if you lose that, People smell that from miles away yeah. and they know you're not being true to yourself. So mm-hmm. I, I, I'll hardly get it. And I think that goes with the consultative piece in terms of helping them grow. But Dennis, this has been, uh, I, I hope it's been great for me. It's been a pleasant conversation. <laughs> I hope Wade feels the yeah, same. I, like I don't want to speak. Wade, <laughs> go ahead. No, I loved it. Yeah. And that's I like it. it. That's all you got for me. I love it. I admire the the dedication. Uh, Dennis has his own podcast, so he he was able to run this one. <laughs> I, I like the cues on when we should ask questions. So thank you so much. <laughs> what? I, uh, I I I think I'm like I'm like one of those expando sponges. Like if there's room, I'm just gonna. Oh, that's know, fine. That's fine, man. Like, hey, Gil like, Sears, all you need is a six inches of daylight, and you hit that hole. But. All right, man. No, it's been great. Uh, looking forward to having you on in the future, man. I uh, really enjoyed it. And I hope our advisors and even consumers get something out of it because I always think there's something cool about knowing about the business of advice. So they know yeah. they know how to sort of read the room a little bit better when they're speaking to advisors. Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't agree more. I think the more I think the more homework and the more prep that somebody does, uh, the better, but not to the not to the point where you uh, um, what is that procrastination? Yeah, by, paralyze uh, yourself the, in thought. Yes, yes, yeah. You paralyze yourself and you don't make anything, which I think is a big thing on uh, the do-it-yourself investor too, which maybe wow. we can talk about another time. Cause... Well, no, it's like the biggest question we got from Wade and myself when we were doing the RISA study is, Wade, you got it. We, they, we, they would say, "Hey, we get all of this. Mm-hmm. I've read everything, but how do I start?" Yep. Because <laughs> it's like once it gets ready to start, you're like, okay, now what? Let me read something else. You know, it's very easy to do that. And sometimes you just got to like, yeah. the only way out is through and you just got to do it. But uh, that's for another day. Thank you so much, Dennis. Really appreciate it. And we'll have you back, man. All right. I love it. You guys take it easy. Thanks for having me on.